Good afternoon, Team Kestva, or, you know, 2 a.m. study sesh, whatever floats your boat. Today, we got a spicy one, and we all know what that means. Seismic design examples. Ah! 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 Kind of spicing it up halfway through, so you're going to want to stick around for that. And we're going to be diving into the ASCE 716 provisions today. So, we're obviously, we're walking through step by step. Give it a like if you like the content here today and uh, you know, subscribe maybe. Join the Team Kestifa. Everyone up in the auditorium above you, it's kicking back, they're learning. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Get out my pen, a pen of learning. Oh. A two-story 100 foot by 100 foot industrial facility in seismic design category A has a second floor that is used for storage and a 200 PSF reduced floor live load. If the facility has a flat roof that experiences a snow load of 50 PSF and the total dead load of the building is 200,000 pounds, the minimum lateral force E in pounds for the entire building is most nearly what? So obviously, uh, like we normally try to do, is just underline what the question is. So you're looking for the minimum. If I underline the whole thing, lateral force for the entire building is most nearly what? And we know that the units are in pounds, they give us that. So this is seismic design. So for all of you not in a you know, seismic controlling region of the, uh, of the USA, I get that this isn't your bread and butter. You're not exposed to this a lot. Don't fear, we're going step by step. And this one's a nice little one to start. And then we're gonna crank it up a little bit at uh, midway through and throw in a little more criteria and scenarios for you. All right, so this is a good for the first time seismic designer out there. So first off, you, what you do want to uh, acknowledge for the PE exam is that you obviously are supposed to solve a problem within six minutes. That's what each problem is designed for. So for seismic design, there's a lot of criteria that goes into it, just like I'd say how much criteria goes into wind design. Um, everyone seems to think that seismic, there's just so much more because there's more chapters and blah, blah, blah. But honestly, I think overall seismic design is easier than wind design. You what? But to that point, what I'm getting at is that you usually need a lot of criteria in order to design something for seismic demand or find seismic demand. And today they're asking us to do that, but they don't give us a lot of info. That's pretty skinny up there. So first off, when you see that, you need to most likely go into the assumption that they're looking for the simplified seismic analysis or some other route where you're not actually doing a full uh, analysis using all the equations and all of the design criteria. And that's exactly what's happening here today because they don't give you any info and your seismic design category, the best, most important part is A. So you are the, the least uh, stringent design possible for seismic demand. Uh, a is almost nothing. And, and basically, when you have seismic design category A, I want to say almost always wind is actually going to control the design of your building anyway. But today, that's what we got. I know I'm getting too far into it, and you're already starting to sweat a little bit in those seats. Hey, clean off the leather, all right? We don't want the sweat soaking in. Not here, not in this class. We're staying cool and confident. But what does that mean? What, what do we got to do here? Let's pop over to the ASCE 716, uh, chapter 11. We'll start there. Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, child. Fuck, where is it? Here we are, beautiful chapter 11, seismic design criteria. And first off, we're gonna kind of get through the uh, definitions at the beginning, then the nomenclature. Really, it starts at 11.4, seismic ground motion values. This is where you start to calculate uh, and run through your analysis. But I'm gonna skip us forward here because we don't have a lot of this info. We don't got a lot of this stuff. So we're like, how are we supposed to do this without the stuff? Well, you can do it without the stuff. If I get my pen out, if you go to 11.7, design requirements for seismic design category A. Booyah, baby, that's what we got. Uh, if we read that passage, buildings and other structures assigned to seismic design category A need only comply with the requirements of section 1.4. And then it gets into a little bit other jivey stuff, but that's all we're going to take from that. So this is just a little vehicle in the code that's going to send us over to there now. So let's head over to chapter 1.4. Here we are, 1.4, 
general structural integrity. And actually, if you slide down and you head over to 1.4.2, that's where you see lateral forces. That's what we're looking for. Each structure shall be analyzed for the effects of static lateral forces applied independently in each of the two orthogonal directions. So that's, you know, each way, just like you would for wind. In each direction, the static lateral forces at all levels shall be applied simultaneously. Okay, that's normal. For purposes of analysis, the force at each level shall be determined using that equation. This sucker right here. So F sub X equals 0.01 WX, and they give you what those, the definitions uh, of the variables below right here. So F sub X is the design lateral force applied at story X. Okay, that's what we're looking for. And then uh, W sub X is the portion of total dead load of the structure D located or assigned to level X. You will see that for this equation, W sub X is the total portion of dead load of the structure. So it doesn't talk about any other potential loads that need to be added in for your seismic analysis. Now, in other seismic design categories, you know, B, C, D, E, and upward, uh, there are more criteria, more stringent requirements, and that take into effect uh, partial amounts of snow load, partial amounts of storage loads, other things like that. But for this very simple, very, very simple analysis, you don't consider any of that. So that was actually just additional information provided to you to try to trip you up and throw you off a little bit. But they just want dead load. So let's jump back. So snow load, don't need it. Live load, don't need it. So we just have total dead load of 200,000 pounds. So that is just going to break down into 200,000 pounds. Going to equal F sub X equal to 2,000 pounds. And boom, bada, prat. Green answer is A, 2,000 pounds. Don't go anywhere yet. That was obviously super easy. Seismic design category A, what can I say? That's, that's as simple as it can be. Uh, because, again, 2,000 pounds, when you're looking at that solution for the total lateral forces acting on your structure, that's nothing. Wind is clearly going to control, even if you're in a non-windy area, uh, design requirements for wind, I'm almost guaranteeing, is going to be greater than that. So that's why it's super low. It's super straightforward. They really don't care that much. They just say, all right, take 10% of the total weight of your structure. That's going to be your your design lateral force for seismic, for something that silly. And for seismic design category A, you're in regions where they are not expecting to see any ground motion. They're not expecting any earthquakes at all. And if they ever did, it wouldn't do anything. But maybe I'm wrong, but that's my two cents on that. So you might be saying, hey Rich, I don't feel that confident about seismic. That was really straightforward. And there's some beefy sections uh, in the ASCE that go a lot more into it than this. So there's gotta be way more going on here. Now we're going to get into uh, seismic design through the simplified design method. So we're not going to go full analysis yet. I actually have three videos already where we go soup to nuts, beginning to end, doing a full lateral analysis. Check those out, thumbnails above now. Uh, but open up a new tab, go to those later, stick here with this, let's finish this out. In order for us to do a simplified design analysis, we need a little bit more information, just a little bit more though. We're going to go simplified design analysis. Now we're going to say seismic design category B instead of A. We have a soil site. Yeah, I'll explain what that means later. We have an S sub S equal to 0 0.5. And for our lateral system, we have a steel, ordinary, concentrically braced frame. Oh, mouthful. In order to start, we need to hop back into the ASCE 716 and we are actually going to jump now to chapter 12. So here we are, we're in chapter 12, and we're actually in chapter 12, section 14, simplified alternative structural design criteria for simple bearing wall or building frame systems. Well, we said we had a steel frame, concentrically braced frame, that's a steel frame system, so that counts for us. So this is the section we're gonna to wanna to be in to do our analysis. Now we're gonna scroll down further to the bottom, and we're looking for total lateral force acting on our structure, which is the same thing as finding your base shear. That's just the lateral force. They're not asking for overturning forces or 
anything of that nature or a distributed load per story. They're not asking for any of that. They're just asking for the total lateral force, which is the same thing for seismic as your base shear. That equation is this guy right here. So 12.4.8.1 is seismic base shear. So we have V equals F times SDS over R times W. And you might be saying, well, what are some of those things? Well, if it goes down to the next page here, you see that where SDS is equal to 2 thirds F sub A times S sub S. Well, we were given S sub S now. Next, we need to find everything for this equation in order to find our SDS so that we can then plug it back in to that equation to find our base shear. We know is 0 0.5, and that criteria was given to us. That's, the, that's one of the pieces of info that I added for this. F sub A, what do we got here? Well, if you look below, it actually says where F sub A is permitted to be taken as 1.0 for rock sites, 1.4 for soil sites. So I did add that info saying that we have a soil site, and that would be criteria that's specified by your geotechnical report. That would be supplied by others, by a geotechnical engineer, and they do you know, soil analysis, a site analysis, and they, they generate a report, and they give you all that good stuff. But um, they make it pretty simplistic here, since it's the simplified design method, and they just say, hey, if you have a rock site, if you have a soil site, okay, you can use these, or you can determine in accordance with section 11.4.4. So we have technically all the info we need to find SDS. Let's go back and let's Let's write the equations out. Let's plug it all in, okay? SDS is equal to 2 thirds times FA times S sub S. Well, S sub S is 0 0.5. FA for soil site, we said was 1.4. And then 2 thirds is just 2 thirds. So that comes out 0 0.466, okay? Now from here, we have the other equation, base shear, V equaling F times SDS over R times W. Well, SDS we know right here. That's easy. Uh, F we don't have, R we don't have, and W we don't have. Well, this time, if we go back, we can find F and R, and then we'll solve for W at the end here. So F, let's find first. And if you look just even lower down here, they got the solutions for you there. So F... Uh, is 1.1 for buildings that are two stories above grade plan. We know that we have two stories with this structure based on the original problem where you have that storage load on the second floor and then you have uh, snow load on the roof. So two stories, that means F is 1.1. Now we said that we did have a uh, concentrically braced frames, steel braced frames for this. And if we scroll up here, not too far, you will see we have this table, so design coefficients and factors for seismic force resisting systems for simplified design procedure. They have this same table, and it's expanded in Chapter 12. Don't use that table. You want to use this table specifically in, I know it's Chapter 12 as well, but 12.14, uh, specifically for simplified design procedure. You need to, if you're doing the simplified procedure, you need to use this table. If you're doing a regular procedure, you need to use the other tables, okay? No, you can't mix and match. So if we scroll down here, we are a building frame system, and we are steel ordinary concentrically braced frames. If we go across, we need to take this value. So that's three and a quarter, and that's our response modification coefficient, r. And that's part of the equation for base shear for our simplified method. So 3.25 is the value we're going to use. Seismic design category B, we just need to check the limitations. P means permitted. I believe that says down below what that stands for. Yeah, right here in the footnote. So P is permitted and P is not permitted. We're OK to continue uh, our analysis this way. So let's jump back and let's plug that in. 3.25. Now we just need W. And that is the seismic mass of our building. But you might just say, oh, well, we just take the 200,000 pounds like we did last time, right? Well, not so fast. Now, if we go back to the code and we go back to our section that we're at, 12.14.8.1, if you scroll even further, they have more criteria 
talking about W. So your effective seismic weight of the structure includes the dead load. So that was the 200,000 pounds, we'll just say 200 keps, and other loads above grade plane as listed in the following text. So there's some other forces and loads that might need to be included based on your design criteria. In areas used for storage, uh-oh, we got that, a minimum of 25% of the floor live load shall be included. All right, so we need to remember that in our jargon, 25% of the live load for storage space. And then you have exceptions below, um, obviously just for A and B, so floor live load in public garages and open parking structures need not be included. That's not us. And where the inclusion of storage loads adds no more than 5% of the effective seismic weight at that level, it doesn't need to be included. That's not us. We have a big storage live load. I think it was 200 PSF. That's a huge weight, so that's, that doesn't apply to us. So the exceptions don't apply to us this time. We need to include our storage live load. Then if we go down, you will see actually right here, number four, where the flat roof snow load, P sub F, exceeds 30 PSF, remember we have 50 PSF, 20% um, of the uniform design snow load must be included as well, regardless of the actual roof slope. We have a flat roof anyway, so we definitely have to include it because it's gonna be sitting up there. So we have snow and storage live load that we need to take a portion of each and lump that into our total seismic mass. That's a lot of info. Let's jump back, we'll write it all down, we'll get it included. All right, so W ain't gonna be as straightforward as we thought. Well, we know we have dead load of 200 kips. Next, we have snow, which is 50 PSF, and then we have an area of our building of 100 feet by 100 feet, so that's 10,000 square feet of roof space times 50 PSF, and then if we multiply that, by 0 0.2, because that was the 20% of total roof snow load that we need to include with our seismic mass. And you know, divide by 1,000, get it into kips for us. That's gonna equal 100 kips. And then lastly, we have our live load, which is 200 PSF. Again, same area, only it's on the second floor, not the roof, 100 feet by 100 feet, it's 10,000 square feet. This time we need to take 25% of that, divide by 1,000, get into kips. That's going to equal 500 kips of additional weight. That's a lot. So if we combine all these together, W is going to equal 200 plus 100 plus 500, which equals 800 kips for your total seismic mass for W. So 800K needs to be included here. That gives you a total base shear equal to 126.2 kips. So that is a much higher demand, um, and that's because we are designing for uh, design category. That's, you know, we bumped up to B. I gave you an S sub S of 0 0.5, which is, it's not the highest in the world, but it's definitely not the lowest in the world. So that plays a factor into it up here, um, solving for your, your SDS. Your F sub A was conservatively, very conservatively taken at 1.4. Um, you can calculate that out and maybe get that to be a little bit lower. Um, but just for the simplified approach, that's all we did here today. So when we talk about simplified approach, it means that the code allows you to do this simplified version, but it means that it's conservative. So your design forces are most likely jacked up. They're a lot higher than if you really sharpened the pencil and you did a full out analysis, you could prove that your design forces could be less. But if you wanna take, I don't wanna say the easy route, if you wanna take the simplified route, you get penalized by having to be conservative with your design and then having sometimes an, a more conservatively designed structure. Which isn't always a bad thing, but that's just, I wanna lay it all out in front of you. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. You made it all the way through. You're feeling real confident. You're feeling real good. We're at the very end. So spring 2021, good luck to everyone taking the exam. You're gonna do great. I'm glad you've been in class with us and you've been rocking it with your other cast of the teammates next to you. Look on either side. You guys are, you know, don't pat, don't, Jose, don't pat him on the back. Don't, don't touch him. Well, besides Jose, everyone looks good. Everyone feels comfortable. So. 
you have any questions or comments, leave them below as always, and I will see you all in the next one. Later.